The numbers are wrong. As it were. Hello. Happy January 1st, 2024. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me, word for word. Verse by verse at the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me. Um, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. What are these things be so? Read along with me because sometimes, <laughs> well, more often than not, unfortunately, the mouth will go quicker than the brain. Keep an eye on it. Today is the first. We're going to be reading a little of, uh, well, we're going to read the whole proverb. Proverbs chapter 1. Get the scriptures. Read along with me. Proverbs 1. Verses 1 on to verse 10. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and instruction, which comes from the fear of the Lord. To perceive the words of understanding, departing from evil. The words of understanding. Here are your words of understanding. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Okay? Understanding is what? Departing from evil. Okay? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, which false converts hate, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And see from verses 1 on to verse 4, you see a whole compact sandwich there. You see wisdom, instruction, understanding, justice, judgment, equity. And, it's, and it begins from what? Verse 2, to know wisdom, fear the Lord. Okay? A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Yes, because when your foundation is the rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when He is your foundation, okay, from that will come what? True knowledge and instruction through Scripture, which leads unto what? Understanding departing from evil. Okay? Ought to. Anyway. And a man of understanding, look at that verse, okay? A wise man, one who fears the Lord, will hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not the word of Rome, but the word of God, okay? And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. Now, dark sayings, we've talked about this before. Dark sayings is not that the scripture, which is a source of light, the true light, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But they are dark because unless you have the Lord dwelling within you, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, the deeper things of scripture will be unto you dark because... You need the Lord to get deep within Scripture. Devils can skim across this. Uh, Satan, through his church, Roman Catholicism, has given many a plethora, F.A., of books on spirituality and this, that, and the other thing. Commentaries galore to bleed out your nose. Why is that? To make up for the Spirit of God that isn't there within Catholicism and Christianity. Okay? So, where it says dark sayings, it isn't saying that the scripture itself is uh, dark. No. Unless you have the Lord, you know, the spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Unless you have him, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Um, the deeper things of scripture, you ain't going to know. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools who say in their heart there is no God despise wisdom and instruction. Look at that verse. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Unless you have the fear of the Lord, what knowledge are you going to possess? The one that is first earthly, sensual, devilish, the one that comes from the earth, from Satan. Okay? And fools who say in the heart there is no God, but themselves. But themselves. They are their own God. You can, you can go ahead and read that catechism over there. Okay? The Catholic Church still preaches, at least in that thing, that man can become God. Call me a liar. Check you, you Catholic, you don't even know your own system. You think you do. And that's what makes you dangerous. Catholic, your, your system is of Satan himself. Anyway. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. And that is not mother church, you wicked Catholic devil. No, okay? Father and mother are the ones that are supposed to train the children to bring them up in nurture and admonition of the Lord. Not hand them off to a Jesuit priest or a Jesuit system like any public school system in America today. <laughs> any other nation for that matter. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Now, verses 10 on to verse 16 here. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Sinners, lost sinners, those of Rome. Look, Catholic. If you're a Catholic, a professing Catholic, and trusting in Catholicism, you're lost. You're lost. There is no such thing as a saved Catholic. A Catholic can be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, if you're of Rome, you're lost. There's no such thing as a saved Catholic. How could someone be saved and remain in the church of Rome? Ain't going to happen. Sooner or later, the Lord is going to grab you out of that filth. Okay? But... My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, join us. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Those that are trusting in Rome and all of Satan's stuff and Christianity, which is nothing more than a daughter of the whore. Okay? Let us swallow them up alive as a grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Well, Catholic, don't you know that Catholic, Catholicos means universal? Yes, I do. And our Lord himself said that he came not to bring peace, but a sword. Because in one house there will be two against one and three against two, that kind of stuff. But Catholicism, just like in the Tower of Babel, want to bring everybody together so they can make a tower unto themselves to reach unto heaven. See, God is a God of distinction. You over there, you over there, you over there, you over there. That's beautiful. They, that's, that's scriptural, Jack. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? There ain't nothing wrong with that. And yes, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is for all. But see, it is not what is dictated to you by Rome. That's Satan's religion. That's Satan's church. Okay? It's not of Rome. It is of Christ, which is salvation. Okay? And it is available to anyone. It is. But see, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to have contrition, meaning taking responsibility because you put him on the cross, just like I did. And you have to have fear of him. That When you are truly broken of your self-righteousness and you are being a man or a woman and taking responsibility, that fear of the Lord kind of comes a little bit more easier. And then in that state, in brokenness and contrition and fear, what else is there to do? 
call. Lord, save me. Which so many people kind of want to forgo and save themselves by their own belief. Okay? And what does Catholicism do? They offer you a system where you can justify yourself because I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And not one of you Catholics ever refuted the fact in the previous video, uh, I don't know if this is going to go on the backup channel or the main channel yet, but in the one uh, Catholic Lives, not one of them Catholics did comment in the point about a lot of them. Not one of them ever refuted the fact that they're Catholic priests. They said, read their Bibles. But don't read it too much because you'll get into heresy. You got to go to that. Not one of them refuted that because that's what they're taught. You're taught to be a slave, Catholic. You're taught to be a slave. My son, verse 15, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy, their, refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Yeah, by make haste to shed blood by giving you the perfectly round bale cookie, because you guys, you Catholics, you know, you see the back of your Jesuit priest who is telling you he's another Christ, so what happens? They raise the sun, S-U-N, which is a perfectly round cookie, like this. Catholic, you're a Baal worshiper. You worship the S-U-N when he raises it like that, perfectly round. You're a pagan, okay? Your religion, Catholic, began in Babylon, crafted in Egypt, perfected in Rome. Listen, as I told a couple people in the previous video, y'all Catholics need to get your head from out of Rome's buttocks. Okay? Actually, I said you need to get your head uh, out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Okay? Because you, get, you, you, you poor Catholics, you got your head so far up there and you're willing to believe anything. Especially the lie that you can't learn who the Lord is without them. That, that's thievery, but that's another video. And what do they do? Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Verses 6 on to verse 23. Okay? They say, come with us. Join with us. Okay? Let us all have one purse. Let us do all this together. How do they do it? Proverbs 7, verses 6 on verse 23. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement. I beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths. A young man void of understanding, void of departing from evil. Passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. Her house. The whores. Roman Catholicism. Okay? In the twilight. In the evening. In the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So what did she do? So she caught him and kissed him, and said with an impudent face, and so she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. This this stupid, you know, why don't you come to the church that Christ founded? Which Christ? Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, did not found Rome or the church of Rome. That's Satan's church, pal. Okay? You need to wake up. All right? But what do they do? Hey, come, come to us. 
I have. What does it say? I have peace offerings with me. You do the Mass, you do Contrition, you have, um, uh, Acts of Contrition, which is totally different in Rome than what is in Scripture. You do your penance, you do your... Um, confession, you do whatever, whatever, all these works and at the end of the day, Catholic you don't know whether or not you're going to go to heaven okay, you don't and, and Rome tells you it's the sin of presumption to presume that you know you're going to heaven when you die when scripture tells us we can know. Ah. Verse 15. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. And, and, and look at it. Look at Christianity. Look at Catholicism. They're one and the same. Why? Because it all revolves around you. It's all about you. See, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, the way, okay, the way, as it was originally called, okay, um, it's all about Christ. The Christ of the scriptures. Christianity and Catholicism, that's all about Satan. Because it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. And when it's all about you, you are of your father, the devil. You will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, as it says in Isaiah chapter 14. Okay? I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, of the world, but also literally of Egypt, because look at Rome. They got, what was it? They got some of their obelisks, which is an uncircumcised phallus. Sorry. Okay, but that's just a fact. Okay? Like these uh, phallus houses, these church buildings with the steeple on it. And you're going to, you Christian, you're going to go into that? <laughs> Good luck. Okay? Church buildings which are of Rome, which are of Satan. Okay? God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands today, people. Get that through your thick cabeza. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Oh, because it's all about you and your pleasure, isn't it? Hey, Catherine, you feel pretty good when you eat a wafer cookie because that's how you receive Christ. <laughs> it is. Don't, I mean, don't lie about it. You, Catholic, receive Christ by eating a cookie. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Making a reference onto the fact that he's, he's up there and he's going to come back down at his second coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Again, second coming, bag of money, giving rewards. Okay? With her, much fair speech she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Devils, dragons, speak smoothly, softly, barely above a whisper sometimes. Never offensive. No. They speak unto you smooth things. They prophesy. They, they put off this aura as being gentle, soft, so concerned of you, and they lo <laughs> love you. <laughs> but see, Satan also will divert you by thinking that they'll, well, having you believe that all devils speak in profanity and in gruffness and stuff, they do. But see, any, anybody who claims to be a Satanist, and, and saints, try this sometime. Anybody who claims to be, well, I'm a Satanist, like, you know, then why aren't you Catholic? 
you, you, hey, you Satanists out there, it's like, I worship Satan. Then you should go be a Catholic. Because Catholic, you do not worship the God of Scripture. You don't. You don't. You worship one God who is comprised of three people. And what is a person? A spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And your little satanic trinity will be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's all about Satan. Catholic, you don't have the right God. Okay? You don't. You don't. You don't have the right God. You don't have the right gospel. You don't have anything right besides a couple of people's names. Okay? Because, yes, there was an Apostle Paul. Yes, there was an Apostle Peter who was never a pope. Scripturally, you cannot prove at all that he ever once went to Rome. And remember, history was written by those who killed those who actually lived it. Like that one guy in the comment, you don't know history. Uh, yeah, and if Rome tells you to jump, you say how high, boy. Give me a break, pal. And because someone is so duped by Catholicism, what happens? He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Or as a fool who says in his heart there is no God to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver. As a bird hasteth to the snare. And knoweth not that it is for his life. Back to Proverbs 1. Verses 17. Where are you doing? Uh, verses 17 on to verse 19. Surely in vain. The net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. And when you are in a system, in a religion, that focuses around you, a satanic religion, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. It's all about your gain. How you can, how you can have your cake and eat it too. Revelation chapter 18. And uh, <laughs> incidentally, I, I, uh, I have to be a little gruff with you here. You know, <laughs> Catholic, if I hated you, you know how you hate someone? Don't say anything. Shut up. You want to show hate to someone? When you know the truth of Scripture, don't say anything. That's how you show hate. Let them run off the cliff without you even saying a word. We show love by warning you, Catholic. You're in Satan's religion. You're going to go to hell. You need to get away from Rome. Rome is everyone's enemy. Even if you don't want to accept that. Rome is everyone's enemy. Because it's Satan's church and religion. And unless you get away from Rome. And get to the scriptures yourself. And go to the Lord yourself. Hell awaits you. Catholic. You die in that system of Rome. Your ticket is punched. You're going to hell. Now you can get out of that. The Lord can rescue you out of that. But see, it's not at gunpoint. He's not going to force you to do it. You have to make the right decision. And when Rome comes around with all its glamour and glitz and just lulls you to sleep with her sweet words. Because Rome gives you something that you are lacking. An emotion, a feeling that God is with you, especially if you eat him when he isn't. Poor thing, you. Revelation chapter 18, verses 3 and verse 10. 
Oh, like I was saying, when brethren, people, when you talk to a Catholic specifically, specifically, usually you have to smack the 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 uh, the Catholic very hard with the sword because they believe that we believe in the same thing. And this is the way with a lot of Christians as well. They believe that we believe the same thing and believe in the same God. No, we don't. And usually you have to smack them with the sword very hard. Okay? Before we read in Revelation chapter 18, let us remember the words in Jude. Okay? All right? Where it says, uh, verses 22 and 23... And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. But yet Rome is all about flesh. So is Christianity. Okay? Brethren, when you're dealing with the Catholics specifically, Catholics are very difficult to uh, witness onto. Especially when they're made too full the child of hell than the Jesuits who trained them. <laughs> we'll deal with that in another video. But, uh, yeah. You gotta have sometimes hit these Catholics hard. With the sword. And... <coughs> Revelation 17 is describing the Roman Catholic Church. Don't believe people like Eric Lionheart and others out there, Stephen Anderson... And even these twits who want you to believe that America is Mystery Babylon. America is not Mystery Babylon. Listen, I love you. If you believe, truly believe, that America is Mystery Babylon, you're stupid. Okay? I, I love you. You're stupid. Willfully ignorant. That's stupid. How can you read from the authorized version of the scriptures, Revelation 17, and come away with it that it's talking about America? Simple. You're not saved, and you're being told that by Rome. Now, a novice is different. A, a babe in the, law, in the Lord, that's different. That's different. A babe who comes and says, well, yeah, that's America. They run into a saint. It's like, no, 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 no. Okay, was, <laughs> was America founded? Okay, are America's colors purple and scarlet? No. Is, does America sit on uh, seven mountains? No. Does everybody go to America <laughs> for like peace treaties and stuff like that? No. No. Okay, no. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I, the arguments for that as well. Uh, nations have been made drunk by the, our fornication here in America. Uh, pornography. Isn't it interesting that the two biggest things that America gives to the world are weapons and porn. And money that ought to be three things. And money that ought to be invested at home, Jack. Well, no, give it off to like Ukraine and, Ukraine and stuff like that. Nothing against you people in Ukraine. Nothing about that. But hey. We, we got our own problems. We, we pray for you, sure. Absolutely. But you know, look at America, Jack. Look at our nation. Where, why isn't that invested here? Well, that's because America is a Catholic country. Okay, and watch out for people to tell you otherwise. But <laughs> Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon. Anyone tells you otherwise is working for the Vatican themselves. They, we call those coadjutors, okay? Someone who is ignorant is different, okay? You can cure ignorance. Someone who is willfully ignorant purposely doesn't want to know that's stupid, okay? And if you're going to deny Scripture plainly showing you that it's talking about Rome in Revelation chapter 17 and say, well, it's America. Revelation 18, verses 3 on to verse 10. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, 
and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Rome, this is talking about Rome. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker, uh, partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached on to heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. And remember, the book of Revelation is written for the, is what's going on here, is written for the Jewish people. Okay? It's describing things that are going to happen. The body of Christ is not on the earth after Revelation chapter 4. One. That's the redemption of the purchased possession, which you Catholics are not taught. You're taught that Christians are going through the great tribulation. Christians are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble. But the saints, the body of Christ, we out of here, Jack. Catholic, listen to me. I know, Rome makes you feel good. Rome is leading you to hell. Rome is going to put you in hell if they have anything to do about it. You can get out of that. Come, let us reason together. You and I. Okay? Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen, and am no widow, Mother Church, and, sh and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment, for thy judgment is, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Excuse me. Now, people, America's not a city. Okay? And it's not Jerusalem, which is the city of the great king. Come on. It's not Mecca either. No. It's Rome. It's the Vatican. A lot of you Catholics going through the time of Jacob's trouble who are going to die, unfortunately, will probably find this out by the time it's too late. Catholic, you need to get out of Rome. You need to not be Catholic. Because it's a universal religion created by Satan to put you in hell. Period! Okay? Period! Now, back to Proverbs. The very first proverb. Picking up at verse 20. Picking up at verse 20 on to verse 23. Check this out. Now we see how the woman, Roman Catholicism, deceives through her subtlety. But now verses 20 on to verse 23 in Proverbs 1. Wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She, she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my lowercase s spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. 
and you Catholics, you have that spirit of Antichrist. And what does it mean to be anti? Not only to be against, but to replace. Someone who wasn't using the scriptures, but nonetheless, I gave it respect because that's what anti is. It's not just to be against. It's to replace. Thieves! Rome are thieves! Satan is a thief. Okay, more on that in another video. Okay? But, note the she. Wisdom is likened unto a she. And there are some twits out there. It's like, that's calling, you know, wisdom a female. So what? Jesus is a woman? Oy vey, just shut up. Wisdom in scripture is likened on to what? A beautiful woman. The fear of the Lord is likened on to a woman. Okay? Because remember, women, Adam was made first. Okay? And look, you women out there, uh, a lot of you don't like this. I understand that because of the times we live. Um, you were made for Adam. Adam wasn't made for you. Okay, you see so many of these so-called Christian women desperately trying to justify them usurping authority over man and being on a public platform like YouTube teaching men. Uh, dear young brother, who I consider a brother, Scott is his name, um, he's fallen into that trap trying to justify his lovely help meet um, as a female preacher. Um, not putting into the equation that he's on a public platform. Okay? And I'd love to talk to Scott personally about that. Because I know who deceived him in that. Okay? But anyway. Anyway. In Scripture, the fear of the Lord is likened unto the beauty of a woman. It's beyond the beauty of a woman. But it's given that way so you can process it into our brains that fear of the Lord is beyond comparison in beauty. What you and I can see as a beautiful woman, I'm speaking in the male perspective, of course. You see a gorgeous woman. And remember, as in the beautiful video that the Lord gave our brother, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, which will be in the description box in one of these videos, um, he touched on it yesterday about how beauty fades. You know, the, you know how the devil paints up all these beautiful women and for you ladies out there, these beautiful guys with the makeup and the lotions. Uh, get them to 70. <laughs> get them to 50. Okay? It sags. fades away. But see, the fear of the Lord is beautiful. Proverbs 8, verses 1 and verse 11. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice, clearest verse in scripture that uh, you can go to to point out that, uh, yes, people, the fear of the Lord is compared unto the beauty of a woman. Okay? That doesn't mean it's effeminate. That doesn't uh, knock the woman up above the man. No. It's telling you that the fear of the Lord, especially in the sight of him, is precious. She standeth in the top of the high places by the way in the path places of the paths. Before, as you guys are walking around in darkness, going to every whorehouse, church building that belongs unto Rome, somewhere out there there's a saint who has the Lord within them. Like, hey, don't, don't do that, man. Well, don't, don't do that. Okay? She crieth at the gates. The gates! Before you go into the city. Okay? As our brother Alexander B. Hartley pointed out, you know, uh, you know, check out the video. Short, beautiful video. Okay? But, she crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And ye fools, who say in your heart there is no God, except yourself. Okay? Be ye of an understanding, departing from evil heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right 
things. The scripture is right. A Bible is wrong. Okay? <laughs> that, that pathetic catechism, which I couldn't spin on enough there, Jack. Okay? I can't spin on Rome enough. Okay? <laughs> Those are lies. Excellent things. The authorized version. Okay? Here, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Yes, people. Saints. I know I know a few of you personally who have a problem with this. We are to abhor. Excuse me. Abhor is to have extreme hatred. We are to abhor that which is evil. And cleave to that which is good. By thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Yes, Catholic. I hate your church. I hate your religion. I hate your Pope, Sosa. Remember, Francis is a Jesuit. And Sosa is the head of the Jesuits. He is the head of Catholicism. So according to Jesuit doctrine... Sosa is, uh, Francis is subservient unto Sosa, okay? I hate your Pope, and guess what, Catholic? I hate your God. Yes, I do. I, I make no bones about that, okay? Because Catholic, your God is Satan. Your God is Satan, okay? And I hate Satan. We are to hate every false way. Now, you Catholic, even though sometimes you really... <laughs> I don't hate you. I don't. I want to see you saved, Catholic. I do. I would love to see a Catholic saved. But a lot of you are so into that from because of tradition, man, eh? right? Or you grew up Catholic or whatever. I want to see you Catholics saved. I do. But usually what happens is you're too ah, hooked by the whore. And you don't have wisdom. Which is beautiful. Verse 7 again. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination into my lips. Wickedness. That what comes from Rome and her daughters. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. The fear of the Lord. Okay? They are all plain to him that understandeth departing from evil. And write to them that find knowledge. Knowledge which comes from what? Wisdom. The fear of the Lord. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. Which you know the glamour and the glitz thereof. Which Rome offers you. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired. Are not to be compared to it. Is this so right there? Satan, through his church, does what? If you fall down and worship me, all these things will be, my, uh, will be thine. You dear Catholic, I don't hate you. Catholic, if I hated you, you know what? I wouldn't say anything to you. I wouldn't say a word to you. I'd just let you go. I wouldn't say anything. If we saints of the Church of God hated you Catholics. You Catholics, you persons, spirit, soul, body. We wouldn't say a thing to you. Now, when you make it known to a saint that you, you've made your choice and you've gone past the point of no return, that's different, you know? Quit, there comes a point where we're casting our pearls before swine, okay? And this is a public platform, okay? This is a public platform. Uh, check out, and this will be in the description box as well. 
uh, the the playlist where, where there are over there are 50 videos where we refute Catholicism okay uh, if we hated you we wouldn't say a word to you and see Christianity hates you because they don't want to scare you they want to love you into the kingdom we ain't building a kingdom today Jack who is Rome Oh, and yeah, and, not, and no, none of these Christians, not as some do, but not the majority don't, especially Rome, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. <laughs> it's like Tom and his two stupid little girls that just bow to his every whim. You know, he, that, that idiot, uh, you know, whoa, what do you mean when did the New Testament begin? In the Council of Nicaea or something like that? Like, dude, uh, Now, go back to Proverbs 1. Go back to Proverbs 1. Picking up at verse 24. And we're going to finish out the remainder of that proverb. Okay? <clears throat> now, you've been warned. You have been told who your enemy is. You've been told and may have been admonished. Hey, you need to get out of there. But what happens when you make the choice and want to stay in that system? Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. And that's, that's the painful thing about dealing with Catholics. You know, they, well, they come up with roundabout arguments and yea hath God said. And <laughs> was in the previous video... There was one guy, a Catholic, who said, I'm a Catholic and proud, good for you. Study scripture. Someone who is admonished to not study scripture, telling someone who studies scripture to study scripture. Bloop. That, that, that was choice. That, 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 that was like, wow. Okay, pal. Whatever. Anyway. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. But see, the, the Jesus of Christianity loves you unconditionally, never is angry. That's not the God of the Scriptures. That's the God of Christianity. Sure is. And Christianity is of Satan. Oh, come on. Get, get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Please. Please. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, people. Time is running out. And once we, the body of Christ, is gone, all Chadez is going to break loose. And then you're going to have to really earn it. Good luck. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Think about this, up to verse 28 so far. For our instruction in righteousness here. Our instruction in righteousness. Right now, today, is the easiest time to get saved. The hard part is getting over yourself. Okay, No, you do not repent of your sins and then get saved. That's not how it works. What are you turning from? Your self-righteousness, which Rome and Christianity builds up in you. When the scriptures whoosh, cut it out of you. Why do you think, Catholic, why do you think you are being told to read a little but not too much? Because God forbid... You actually read the authorized version. Your, head, your eyes be like, whoa. But think about it. Right now is the easiest time to be saved. But after that redemption of the purchased possession, and there are going to be Christians, you know, like Richlingites out there, who are going to be saying, I'll just believe and receive during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is by faith and works. Easily proved that it's by faith, uh, it's not by faith. Uh, by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. Excuse me. It's not. 
It's not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's uh, faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Easily proved. Easily proved. Okay? But then again, this, well, don't read it too much. But go to a Jesuit priest so they can tell you. And look at the result. And see, once we get taken up, Jack, and you're going through that time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to be told, just believe and receive. Right? And calling upon the name of the Lord during the time of Jacob's trouble, as in today, it's faith and works. It's a different dispensation. But you Catholic have no idea. A dispensation. I, I remember the one time, uh, it's like, we believe in dispensations. Yeah. That come from the Pope. Yeah. Beca brethren, Saints, those of you who, you know, rightly divide the word of truth, when you run into a Catholic and you mention dispensations and they say to you, we believe in dispensations, they're not talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. Never forget that. They're talking about something that comes from the Pope. Okay? They're not talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. Never forget that. Don't be deceived. Don't be uh, knocked off course by that. Okay? I've encountered that before. Okay, so well, we believe in, I, yeah, I believe in dispensations. Dude, you believe that dispensation to you is something that comes from your Pope. Uh, no, you don't. Okay, Just be aware of that. Okay, verse 29 For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. No, they chose the fear of man. They would none of my reproof. Uh, excuse me. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. <laughs> Remember, to despise something is to have more than hatred for it. My, my dear brother, uh, when that devil, that idiot, that jerk said, I don't hate you, I despise you. He was telling you that he has more than hatred for you, dear brother. Okay? Just remember that. Just remember that. Okay? Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Ye are your own God, Catholic, basically. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools. You are your own gods. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Psalm 11, uh, Psalm 7, excuse me, Psalm 7, now this, Psalm 7, verses 11 on to verse 16. God judgeth the righteous, God is angry with the wicked every day. But see, Christianity today, God's not angry at you. <laughs> God doesn't get angry, God loves unconditionally. No, he doesn't. You come to him his way and he saves you. There it is. But you reject the true gospel one time, uh, God's wrath is for you, dear friend. Catholic. Please, Catholic. I, please. Consider reading the authorized version. Go to the book of Romans. Beginning chapter 1. Okay, and read that. Okay, read it. Believe it. Okay, please. Be a Berean. Search these things yourself. Don't go to your Jesuit priest. The God that you are being taught is not the God of the scriptures. You're being taught about Satan. Period. God is angry with the, uh, God judgeth the righteous. God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he, sh he will wet, W-H-E-T, his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it has fallen into the ditch which he made. 
His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. And why is that? It's because you have not chosen to fear the Lord, but you have chosen to believe the lie that comes from Rome. Psalm 50. Then we'll be done. We've got another video to do. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Verses 14 on to verse 17. Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked God said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. Well, the Greek, hey, Jeremiah 16. You lying devil. What Greek are you talking about? There's only one Greek. Really? 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 What, what number is Nesalon? Hmm? How many Textus Receptus? Huh? Huh? How many of the Hebrew? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks, boy! You, you know, you, you fall for the lie of saying, maybe, maybe you are a Hebrew yourself. And you're falling for the lie of Rome? Hmm. Dear people. Let, let, here, let's... Second uh, Corinthians chapter... Second <laughs> Corinthians... Open it. Open right up to it. Second Corinthians 6... Verses 14 on to verse 18. Then we'll be done. Catholic. Christian. Look, calling yourself a Christian, no, it's not going to put you in hell. No, if you're a saint and you want to call yourself that, that's your own problem. Whatever. But, you're not being taught or given the right God. You're not being taught or given the right gospel. What you are believing comes from Rome. 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. God does not dwell in temples made with hands today. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. <laughs> Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. The unclean thing like the, the wafer and the wine and the glamour and glitz that comes from Rome. And I will be a capital F father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Like Alberto Rivera said, you cannot go from Christ to Rome. You can go from Rome to Christ. You cannot go from Christ unto Rome. It's impossible. It is impossible. Dear, dear Catholic, I don't hate you. I, I hate everything about your system that you're in. I've, I've never made any bones about that. Never. Not once. No, not one time. Okay? But uh, I don't hate you. I hate what you're involved in. So That's going to be it for this video watching this if you do. See you later.